Hello everyone, we are back with the virtual fold along series. My name is Madeline Garcia and I'm the lead teaching artist at Minnesota Center for Book Arts. Um, we are a arts nonprofit organization located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We focus on storytelling and engagement with a book form through exhibitions, um, access to equipment, opportunities for artists, and through educational programs. Um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, all of our programming has been moved online virtually, which is why I'm here today. Um, but we also have virtual classes for adults and kids. This summer, I'm going to be teaching three summer camps virtually um, in coalition with the Loft Literary Center, and you can find out more about those on our website, mnbookarts.org. You can also see all of the adult classes that are coming up. A lot of those are starting soon, so you should definitely check those out. On our website, you can also see all the previous virtual fold along videos that we've made. And there are so many at this point, so that's wonderful. Today, we are going to be making single sheet books. They look something like this. Here is a wonderful one of a castle that I adore so much. I embellished it with a little bit of watercolor. So we'll be making these today, and you'll actually be able to design your own shape. Realize not everyone loves castles as much as I do. I just watched a PBS documentary about castles, so I am super pumped about them. Uh, so to make this book, or one similarly shaped, or differently shaped, you'll need a few materials and supplies. First thing is a pair of scissors. The next thing is a pencil. And then you'll also want to have a bone folder. This is a bookmaker's go-to tool um, we use it for scoring and folding and creasing. If you don't have one though, you could use a popsicle stick or even a butter knife if it wasn't very sharp. And you'll also want to have one sheet of rectangular paper. I'm using standard 8.5 by 11 size, but you could also use 11 by 17, 12 by 18. Any rectangular sheet of paper that you have at home will work. The sizing might come out a little bit different than mine, but that's great. So I'll go ahead and walk through making this book. If you need time to follow along, feel free to pause the video or rewind or maybe fast forward because at this point, you know all there is to bookmaking. The first thing we'll do is orient our piece of paper so that it is uh, landscape. I always say that it will look like a placemat in front of you, so that's great. Once you have your paper in front of you, like so, we'll go ahead and start folding. At the Book Art Center, we do something called the hold and fold technique, which is holding the paper down while you're curling around and folding it. And I always encourage folks to take extra time lining up those corners to the best of their ability. And then I'm going to slide my finger across, crease the fold with my finger, and then come in with my bone folder, holding it like so. And go back and forth. We should have a handsome looking fold just like this. We're then going to find the fore edge, which is the side where the loose sheets of paper are. So opposite from the folded edge. We're going to grab one sheet of paper, almost as if we're peeking into the book, and fold that in half. And we can really take our time here and make sure that these new corners line up with the corners of the folded edge. I'm going to do the same thing, increase with my fingers here, come back in with my bone folder, and go back and forth about two times. That sounds great. And then I'm going to flip my book over so from a bird's eye it'll just look like a regular rectangular piece of paper. 
I'll find the edge that isn't folded and fold that in half. Once again, taking extra care to line it up. Creasing with my fingers, coming back in with my bone folder. Now these folds might seem familiar to you if you've been watching the videos throughout this series. Uh, this is a standard M fold and we have certainly been making them a lot on this series. Um, like I always say, there's, this is a central fold in bookmaking, so a lot of the book forms and variations we do are based on this. So at this point, I am going to gently flatten my M fold. So kind of pressing down with my paws there uh, and being delicate with the book. And then I'm gonna rotate my book 90 degrees so that I have a portrait in front of me. And I'm now going to fold the paper in half once again, this time hot dog style. And it might be a little difficult because we're going against the folds that we've already made, but you can go nice and slow. Take your time. If you were folding a really big piece of paper, um, this way, you might even want to have a partner hold the other edge. Sometimes with big paper, we need more than one person's set of hands. I'm going to crease this new fold with my finger, come back in with my bone folder. And at this point, our sheets should have eight sections, just like so. Maybe it's easier to see from this side. I am going to fold my book again in half on the already folded crease, but I'm going to do it um, hamburger style. So folding it in half just like this so that it kind of resembles the cover of a book. This is the first fold we did with this paper. I can then see that we have quadrants here. We are going to cut from on the center line, starting on the folded edge, one half of the sheet up, and then we'll stop at this intersection here. So with my scissors starting on the folded edge, I'm just gonna cut on this line and stop there. You don't wanna go past that fold. And we should have something like this. Could be a mask. Wonderful. So at this point, you can let half of the book kind of fall down and back into itself, and we'll have something that looks like this. This is a standard um, eight section single sheet book. Um, a lot of zines are made this way, so small artist books. Um, this format works really well for printing on a regular printer. So you could print directly onto an eight and a half by 11 sheet and then cut it up. And once you assembled it and folded it together, you would have a miniature book, a zine. And these are perfect for mass distribution. Maybe you want to make a run of a big edition of books. So you can see that it sets up like this. And if you bring these two sides together, it'll fold just like so, and you have a few pages to flip through. So we are going to begin the customizing of our book. Um, if you're not sure what shape you want to make yours into, you could go ahead and hold off. I'm going to show lots of examples in just a moment. But first, I want to show how to alter this book to look like a castle. So I just looked this up and it, and these uh, square patterns on the top of the castles, I believe are called battlements. Um, and I am going to, with my pencil, sketch these squares out at the top of my book on the folded edge here. You could use a ruler if you want to have things be super exact. 
I'm a bit, big advocate for free handing. So I like that hand drawn quality. So I'm just sketching out little squares where I will eventually cut away. Oops. Wonderful. So I just have some squares at the top of the book here. Now I'm going to begin to cut those out. What is the most important thing to remember when designing your own one of these single sheet books is that you need to leave some paper here where these two halves of the paper connect. So right now we have just these two sections holding all this paper together and if we <laughs> cut this whole design away, uh, we'll just be left with two longer shapes of paper, so we need to leave some of that fold there. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting these squares, these battlements out. You, if you want to, can start sketching out your single sheet book. I love this book form because it's so simple. I love when books don't require glue or thread. You can make it anywhere as long as you have scissors. Uh-oh, a little ripping going on here. That's okay. Okay. And I have a byproduct of confetti. <laughs> okay, so right here, this is starting to take, take castle form. You can see that the paper is still connected here and here, and that is wonderful. And the next thing I'll do is add a door. So on this fold here, I'm gonna cut up from the bottom and make a little slip, slit, so it'll look like that. And then I think I'll go for a square door for this castle. I don't know how historically accurate that is. You can see I've sketched a little door there. I'm just going to cut on the top part of the door. Now, I realize this might be a little confusing since I'm walking you through how to customize your own. At MCBA, we do normally pass out templates, which makes the cutting easier. However, everyone's book generally looks the same. So I'm more of an advocate for everyone having their own customized individual book. So right here, you can see we have these little flaps for the doors. I'm gonna go ahead and go, I'm gonna go ahead and fold those back. So the doors are open, but they can open and close. And when I close the book as a whole, they should close as well. So this is it. This is pretty much the bulk of making one of these castle books. Most of the fun comes with the embellishing and the decorating that you'll hopefully do next. Um, one great thing about this structure is that you have the whole inside to decorate. So I've gone ahead and put a little pig and a rooster there that you can see a little bit when you open these doors. There's plenty of space also for you to put text. These two sections here could work as text blocks. And then also you want to think about what you'll want to put on the cover of your book. I do want to show a few more examples to get you all inspired. So here's another castle book, and this one is done with a 12 by 18 sheet of paper, which is why it is bigger. We have these lovely little flags here that are just cut out paper and glued. And there's also, what is this, a crest, a shield uh, for the cover of the book. We also have an even bigger castle castle here. This one's called the Marble Castle. And it looks like so when opened. Uh, for this book, they've cut a different pattern on the back as there is on the front. So 
So you would do that by just drawing out a different pattern when you're designing yours. You would still make that first cut, but then from there you would just cut through one sheet of paper instead of two. And we have a text block here for a great story that has yet to come. I went ahead and made one with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that is differently shaped. It's called the big wave. And I just cut out wave-like patterns for this one. Um, and I made sure to keep part of this folded edge intact so the book would stick together. I feel like this book still needs a little swimmer or surfer in here. We have another book here. This is a gorgeous one with cut paper. It's called Sunset on the Misty Mountain. And it has this beautiful sunset scene here. You can see the front section is lower and has a lot of cut paper attachments and the back is higher. I love the clouds in this one. This is one I made about Minneapolis. It's called My City. And we have a cityscape here. Here is one called In My Neighborhood that some other MCBA staff made. I love this one with the houses in the foreground and the backyards in the background. It gets super fun and I love all the colored pencil drawings in here. Here is a superb one. This one was made in collaboration by a lot of us. It's called the Barnyard Chorus. You'll notice it's pretty big. It opens like so. It has these great text blocks that are yet to be written on. And when you open these big Barn doors is a chorus of animals. I can, let's see, can open it up this way for you to see this wonderful scene. And also what is great is these books stand up on their own. So they're super sculptural and they would go well on any bookshelf. It's a great scene to look at. One last one I do want to show is called Starry Frog and you can also use this book form to make animal shapes. This one is a little more complex but the things you can design are endless so hopefully you feel inspired from seeing all these examples. After you make your books we would love to see them uh, so please use the hashtag Homebound edition. My staff and myself have really been enjoying seeing the books that folks have made during this video series. I do want to give you a sneak peek of a book I'm going to be making next Friday. This is a Tower Pop book. So it's another pop out and it opens like this. It's wonderful. So uh, I'll be showing you how to make a house as well as a few other pops. These are great cards. They're wonderful to send in the mail. So please tune in to that. These videos are free and available to all. So please share them with any folks who you think would love them. Um, you can also send them our website and then Book Arts, which has a page with all of the past virtual fold along videos all in one spot. Um, if you do have the capacity now to donate, we would sincerely appreciate that. You can go to our website where you can become a member, buy a gift certificate for our shop, donate, or use the donate button here on the Facebook Live. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to this time every week and hearing what you all have to say. So until next week, thanks so much.